Welcome back to Pray TV. We're very glad that you're here with us, and we have a very special program today. My wife Charlotte is here with us, and Charlotte, I'm so glad to welcome you to the table again. Thank you, Brand. It's good to be here. And we have a friend, Goldie Beach. She is here, and she is a part of the great missions outreach that is going down into Honduras, and we're going to talk all about that today. But as we begin today, we are going to look at a scripture that is taken from Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace for your well-being, to make you prosperous and to give you a future filled with hope. You know, the Lord is really wanting us to be able to have that sense of his presence, that sense of his hope deep in our souls and deep in our hearts. But one of the things that we are wanting to focus on today is a people that really need something of a greater sense of hope in their lives. And that, ought, that is the people down in Honduras. And Goldie, I'd like for you to begin by just sharing with us a little bit about what it is that has drawn you. And now this is your third trip down to Honduras, right? Yes, it is. And of course, Goldie, she is from Honduras, and that happened, you came, what, 30 years ago? 30 years ago. My goodness, and so just share with us a little bit about your journey and being here and this mission and what God's putting on your heart. Yes, thank you so much for having me this morning. I am blessed to be able to share with you of some of what God has done in my life. I came here, as uh, um, our brother mentioned, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, I, my father lived already here in Boston, so I joined him here in Boston. And I had family members here in Boston already, so I, I was not uh, something totally new. And I uh, worked odds and end, uh, odd jobs and until I um, got into the medical field. I worked as a and a medical as a medical assistant uh, in a private practice in pediatrics, and then moved on to work at Mass General Hospital for many years, and then next to that, uh, after that, Brigham Women's Hospital, and until I retired in 2014. Well, it's hard to imagine <laughs> looking at your countenance and, and the favor of God has been on you because you are uh, look like a beautiful young lady, <laughs> actually. And, uh, you know, Charlotte and I, as we were coming down here today, we were listening to some of the things that are happening, particularly with the people that are kind of caught in this migration issue and are coming up from Honduras and Guatemala. And, uh, and there's just a convoy of people that uh, are feeling so desperate that they don't even know how to be able to handle a future in their own nations and in their own countries. And so they are, uh, they are moving along and, and, and coming up and, and there's, there's much resistance as we, um, we understand the different dynamics that are there. But Charlotte, I just wondered if you had some thoughts about that as you were reading to me some of the things that were taking place there. I think these are hard issues, especially for people living in countries where they have been so exploited. Um, and I think that, you know, sometimes it seems like, God, you know, this seems almost like an impossible situation, but there are no impossibilities with God. Uh, Jesus loves the people of the world. Mm -hmm. He died for all of us. He cares for all of us. And I just think today we should spend a few moments praying for the people, especially from Honduras. Um, we know that God ultimately will give us all a hope in the future in Him, in eternal life, in a, a life in heaven. But um, there is a desire, there is a yearning in people's hearts on this earth to really have this hope and this future and to see people so desperate without hope that they have to um, uh, take this migration and try desperately to get into a place where they feel they could have a hope in the future. It's really heart-wrenching in so many respects. I know that Charlotte and I are immigrants as well to the United States, but we came from Canada. 
And I came as a young man because I had a hope of being able to find a way of making a living through Christian music and was able to do so in the United States, but there was no opportunity for that up in Canada. And so I understand and we understand about the whole issue of having a hope and a, a reasonable hope, a reason to have hope, a reason to believe that you can have a future that is going to be prosperous or healthy or hopeful. And so I'm going to read this the portion of scripture one more time and then we're going to pray around the table. And Charlotte, I'll ask you to begin and then Goldie after that, you, you pick it up and then I'll kind of close that time of prayer. But we are going to come back and I want you to be aware of this. We are going to come back and we are going to be again talking about this missions trip because we want to raise up you who are intercessors, keep you connected with what God is doing in this thrust because now this is the third year that this medical missions team has gone down to reach out to people and bless them and minister to them in hospitals and then on street ministries and in homes and, and do evangelism. And there's many things that we're going to share with you. But I'm going to read this portion of scripture one more time and then we're going to go to praying as we do, which is our pattern. And then after that, we will discuss more. Jeremiah 39, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace for your well-being, to make you prosperous and to give you a future filled with hope. Charlotte, would you begin? Father, we thank you that you are the God of hope. God, that you are eternal and with you, God, there is hope, Lord, no matter how hopeless a situation may look. Father, we think especially of the people of Honduras as we pray today. And we ask, O oh Lord, that there would be, God, a real sense, God, of your hope in practical ways too for them, Lord. We ask, Lord, we think of these people who are desperate, God, for jobs, desperate for sustenance, so much so, Lord, that they have formed this human caravan to walk north through Guatemala and are now at the Mexican border. God, we ask that you will give wisdom, Lord, great wisdom in this whole situation, Lord. We know that there has to be a due process, God, but we just ask, God, that you would rule and reign, God, in the affairs of men as you do. And Father, that out of even this seeming chaos, Lord, that you would bring, God, a real sense of your rulership, Father. We appeal to you today, God, for these precious people, God, in Honduras and for that nation, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, we just give you the glory, the honor, the praise this morning, because you're so good to us, Lord. Father, I'm just I want to bring before you the people of Honduras in a special way, Lord. You, Lord, you know their hearts, you know their intent, you know the reason why they're leaving something, their homes, their families, their friends, to come to something that is totally unknown. The perils that they're going through, Jesus, the, just the difficulty of traveling with so many people with nothing. Jesus, I just pray that you may make a way for them and that your will may be done in this situation, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for being who you are in our lives. We thank you because you love us, Lord. No matter where we come from in the world, Jesus, you love us. You died for all of us, each and every single one of us. And today I just want to say thank you for doing that. Thank you for going to the cross for us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness, your love, your grace, your, the hope that you put in our hearts, the hope that you put in each and every person's heart all over the world. You know, there are so many places, so many countries in the world where people are living with no hope. And we just pray today, Jesus, that somehow the light will shine, your light will shine in their hearts and that they will feel 
that you are their hope, their living hope, something that will never go, someone that will never go away. You will always be with them, no matter where they are. And we just praise you today, Jesus. We just thank you for what you will be doing in us today, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you may continue to do the, the good work that you are doing in our lives, Jesus, and that we may be instruments wherever we go to represent you and represent you well. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are at work as the God of hope. You create a doorway of hope in any valley of brokenness, wickedness, any places where there has to be an escape, there's got to be a way out. Lord, you provide it. And Father, we pray that you will show us as your children, us as your people, how to be able to pray effectively, how to be able to pray for those who are in authority over us. These nations, Father, we know that there's a great deal of corruption in many of these nations. And Father, we're, we're praying, Lord, that you will align all of these nations with your principles and your precepts. Father, there are so many nations in the, in the Middle East and in North Africa, and, and people are streaming out of those countries as well. Lord, they're just all trying to escape the oppression. And so, Father, we pray that you will just minister your grace this day. Lord, we pray for Honduras and we pray that you will accomplish your purposes in these people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, we do invite you to stay with us here and, and we're going to go into a little more discussion about this wonderful outreach that has happened now. This is, I believe, the third year. Is that right, Goldie? It is the third year that we're going to Honduras and uh, it was uh, it, it is a, a privilege we call it, we call it a privilege to be able to go down there and minister to the people in so many ways. Uh, you go down there and uh, at the end of the day, of each day you're very tired physically, but your heart is leaping with joy just to see the faces of the children, especially in the, the patients that we see every day. Uh, their, their gratefulness, you know, and some people walk for many, many, many miles. Some people walk o even overnight to get to the clinic to be seen for a few minutes. And all, this, uh, all the supplies, all the medication that we uh, give to the people are totally free. This is what we've been working, what we work for here in America, to buy supplies, to buy medications, to buy Bibles, school supplies, uh, backpacks, anything that we can take to, to um, share with the people out there. Well, tell me how people would be able to know how to get in contact with you, because it would be wonderful if some of our praying intercessors who watch the program not just prayed, but they could actually contribute and give as well. Yes, we have a website. Uh, it's Good Work Servants, one word. For um, If you want to do financial donations, you can write a check to the church, um, Congregation Lion of Judah, and under the memo just write Mission Honduras. Beautiful. That is so important. And we do want to do that. But let's just go a little bit more and ask you some questions. Charlotte, do you have any questions that you have on your heart that you'd like to ask about how this mission takes place? I think it's wonderful that you are giving back, Goldie, and just the sense of, I know the preparation, we've heard through the years since being here that there's an enormous amount of preparation that goes into this. Yes. How long a period are you actually in Honduras? The first trip we made, we were there for, ten, for uh, seven days. The second trip, we were there for 10 days. And uh, this year, we intend to stay for two weeks. And uh, the, it's a lot of preparation, as you mentioned. And even uh, when, when we we're there, there's a lot of preparation to do for the following day, the things that we're going to be doing the following day. Um, as you know, we, we have a, there's a little community um, hospital in the middle of the jungle. 
And uh, as soon as we get there, the first thing we need to do is clean up, make it, uh, make it uh, to be um, good enough for us to be able to see the patients uh, because the time is so short, so we have to like move fast and we need all hands on to help with, uh, with that process. And um, uh, there are so many, so many uh, different uh, instances, so many um, things that happen. But one of, the, um, one of my favorites is there was this uh, gentleman who brought his children. He had two children. And I saw both of them the day before. And uh, very happy guy. And the following day, he came back because um, I'm not sure if, if people know what a machete is. He was working, and he almost cut his hand off with, a, with the machete. And that day, thank Jesus, there was a surgeon who came to donate his time for that day. And it just so happened that the surgeon was there when he was able to reattach this patient's arm. His, uh, his, uh, at the, and uh, even though he was going through all that process, all the pain. He still had a smile on his face. And he came back the following day and he said, thank you so much for what you did for me. If you were not here, I would have lost my arm. My goodness, you know, and particularly in these areas where they have so little to work with. Some of the things that I remember from the, the videos that you shared afterwards when you came back and, and uh, some of the stories it was about the deep, deep poverty and the inability to have just the basics of medical care. But along with the medical care, you bring prayer. Yes. And uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about how you minister to the people there as well, because I know that that's special. We, um, we pass out tracts. Uh, I prepare the patients to, to, to be seen by the doctor. And as I'm seeing each patient, I give them a tract. And uh, we pass out Bibles. And Bibles is like candy to a kid. I mean, people are in through the windows asking, can I have a Bible? Can I have one for my mother? Can I have one for my, my grandmother? And we run out of Bibles really fast, as you can imagine. But the prayer part, we, the last, in, on the last trip we had, we gathered um, the people on the basketball court, which is, a, as you can imagine, in a little village, what the basketball court would look like. But there was a huge group of children and young people especially. And uh, we had a little service and uh, most of the, the young, young adults and children that were there, when they were asked if they wanted to accept Jesus, they all raised their hands and asked that they, because they wanted to accept the Lord in their hearts. And to me, that, that's another big, uh, very special moment. Well, we know that. We understand that. You know, if you actually believe the Word of God, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to the Father except by me. We understand that Jesus is the way, and we present Christ. Charlotte, I'm going to ask you, just as we kind of move to the, the closing part of this, just to really pray, pray your heart over all of those who are going, and especially Goldie here, and God's strength, and, 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 and then we'll just kind of close their time. Lord, I just thank you for this team, Lord, that is going back to Honduras again this summer for the third time. Lord, as they're preparing even now, Lord, as you are moving on hearts, Lord, to just make a way, God, I pray, O oh Lord, that we would do what we can do, that we will be responsive, Lord, to you. God, we just put no pressure on anyone whatsoever because you can speak to hearts, Lord, about how and if they should be involved. But Lord, we pray especially for strength for this team. Yes. We pray for strength for Goldie, Lord, and her sister Bernice who head up this team, God. We ask, Lord, that you would just prepare the way, Lord, as a focus of 
The world right now is on people from Honduras, Lord, that are in such a desperate place, God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would move upon the hearts of your body, your church, Lord, worldwide, to lift up, God, the people of Honduras in our prayers, God. Lord, we know that you can move on behalf of nations, Lord. You have done it in the past, and Lord, you can do it again. Yeah. And we ask, O oh God, for even these nations, Lord, that are sometimes rather obscure in our own minds, Lord. We have to confess. And it's one of the reasons, Lord, why we just love being here in Boston because there are so many people from all over the world yeah. that as we get to know them, Lord, we get to understand their hearts. And so, Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, that you will provide for every need. You already know what's going to be needed, Lord, even as you did this man, Lord, who had been hurt his hand with that machete, Lord. You already had prepared the way to have that surgeon ready and available. So we just thank you for your answers, God, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you know, I'm just going to kind of close by rereading this portion of scripture because this scripture is for those in Honduras, those coming up from Guatemala, those who are feeling like they're a caravan of people just on their way looking for something to give them hope in their hearts. But we know that it applies to you as well. Jeremiah 39, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. I have these plans to give you a hope and a future. We want you to take that to your soul so that you today would be able to enjoy and understand God's plan for you is to give you hope and a future. God bless you.